and welcome to another edition of Senior Connections, the show that is produced and put out by the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. I'm Wendy Schmitz, the supervisor, and today my guests are Greg Robinson and Chuck Getz, both active members of the Senior Activity Center. And they're here for two reasons. We're going to talk about this one of the services that we're offering at the Senior Center right now which is AARP tax preparation. And then we're going to move on to talk about the walking bus project that both of you have been involved in. So Greg, if we could start out, uh, could you explain who you are with that program and what your role is? Sure, Wendy. Um, I am the local coordinator for Sheboygan County for the VITA program, which is the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. It's uh, tax counseling for the elderly. Uh, every year we provide free services uh, for the elderly and disabled in Sheboygan County. Uh, what I do primarily is organize all of the activities. I do the press releases, uh, arrange for the training schedules of the counselors, and then I fill in when uh, we have uh, unexpected uh, uh, sickness or, or, or whatnot. Uh, I am also a uh, recruiter, and I try to uh, get uh, people interested in the service uh, for uh, being a, you know, a counselor. And we really uh, are very proud of the service that we uh, provide. Uh, we actually are IRS certified, and uh, last year we did uh, close to 800 free uh, tax documents or tax uh, returns for individuals within Sheboygan County. Now, I know obviously that we offer that service right at our senior center on 428 Wisconsin Avenue. Where else in the county is that available then? Well, uh, on Mondays, uh, we offer the service in Sheboygan Falls at the Sheboygan Falls Memorial Library. That's from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. And Tuesdays and Wednesdays at the Sheboygan Senior Activity Center from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. And then on Fridays, we offer it at the Plymouth Senior Activity Center, and that's from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. We also offer it uh, in public housing, some of the public housing in Sheboygan County. Uh, we do that on Wednesdays for the first four Wednesdays in February. Um, and that's about it. Well, I know that at the Senior Activity Center, it becomes an extremely busy couple of months through February, March, and the beginning of April. Our phone seems to be ringing off the hook. And, um, and I see the counselors that come in. What, um, do, what does a person have to know, or how does a, a, a volunteer qualify uh, to be part of your program? Because they work long, hard hours. Yes, they do. Uh, they're very dedicated, and uh, the volunteers, we're very proud of them. Uh, first of all, uh, they are given a training packet, and uh, that consists of four large book booklets, and we give that out uh, hopefully about Thanksgiving. And then they work on that diligently, <laughs> and, and they're trying to uh, prepare uh, for a test, uh, and they then take the open book test. It requires probably about 160 hours of training. Wow. And uh, that's the initial training. Of course, the uh, returning counselors don't need that much. Uh, and then uh, we have a three-day training class at the end of January. And uh, that's a 24-hour on-hands training. Uh, which uh, the counselors then do certification problems uh, to become IRS certified. Um, 
Now, do, do the people that you have as volunteers, do they have a math background, <coughs> a finance background? What's, what have they typically been in, uh, prior to retirement? We have them from all walks of life. Uh, there are some people, uh, we've had a vet, veterinarian, <laughs> we've had uh, a lot of teachers, uh, we've had uh, 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 cooks, people that wanted to actually uh, get in the program so that they could uh, act, help out the seniors and the disabled. Um, what one thing that uh, we do encourage is that they be able to have some familiar familiarity with the computers. Uh, we have one individual that also schedules training uh, in uh, winds. Uh, well, it wouldn't be necessarily Wednesdays, but uh, he schedules training in December. Uh, with he works with individually with uh, the people, the counselors, the new counselors primarily, and that's where they learn to navigate through the computer. Hmm. So, if anybody was interested in becoming a volunteer for next year's tax season, they should call the Senior Activity Center and ask for you. That would be uh, perfect. Uh, then I could take their names down. Uh, we could then uh, discuss it. Uh, what I do encourage is that people think this through because we've had people say, oh yeah, that sounds good, mm -hmm. and then they uh, drop out uh, for one reason or another because there is a commitment, uh, and that commitment lasts uh, you know, from January all the way through April, and uh, we would like to make sure that people realize that uh, once they make that commitment, they're, right. they're committed. <laughs> now, um, if I was somebody who wanted to have my taxes prepared at the Senior Activity Center, um, what do I have to know? What do I have to bring? And how do I qualify to, to be a part of the program? Well, uh, that's a, a very uh, good question. Uh, what we do is we would like the people that come to the center and uh, they make appointments, we would like them to take some responsibility in the preparation of their taxes. We have an intake interview sheet we want them to fill out, and if they fill that out once, uh, they can just review it every year. But what we require is that they bring the proper documentation. That is the 1099-Rs and the 1099 INTs, which is for interest, and then of course the uh, W-2s, uh, K-1s, uh, just the normal tax documentation. We also request that they bring their real estate tax bills uh, or, and or their rent certificates if they're going to uh, apply for the homestead credit. Uh, then uh, what we would like them to do is uh, come in about uh, 15 minutes early after they've made the scheduled appointment and talk with our greeter. Uh, the greeter will then go over uh, the documentation, will ask those individuals some pertinent questions, and then assign them to the uh, proper, properly skilled uh, tax counselor. Now I know sometimes we, we get pretty complicated questions on my end and um, people will say, well I run a small business or they own property or, or, or they have itemized taxes. Um, what are your answers to people like that? Uh, we have uh, uh, certain restrictions, uh, certain uh, tax uh, returns are out of scope for us. For example, if it's a large business, uh, that's going to naturally mm -hmm. be out of scope. Uh, we only fill out for small businesses, and what we define as small businesses are those that are, have expenses under $5,000. We do not do farm income. Mm -hmm. We do do itemization, but uh, anything having to do with preparation, we consider that out of scope also. Uh, this year was very interesting in the fact that in December the tax laws changed and mm -hmm. the IRS had to scurry around 
And as a result of that, for the first uh, 14 days in February, we are not able to do any tax preparations that require itemized uh, deductions or uh, educational uh, expenses uh, so or tuition. Uh, we're not able to do that because the ta tax-wise uh, tax software is uh, not updated yet. However, after the 14th of February, it will be updated and we will be able to handle all of those. Now, you and I both know that um, prior to the last week of January, we, we were uh, kind of wringing our hands because we weren't sure that the room was going to be ready. The Friends of the Senior Activity Center very generously paid for internet connection to be available for eight computers. So everything is done electronically, correct? That's correct. Uh, that is one of the conditions that uh, we require when we uh, assist people in filling out their uh, tax forms. Uh, we want to make sure that they realize that we are going to electronically uh, return. We're going to do the electronic returns. Uh, there's some uh, distinct advantages to that because it normally will take, uh, you'll have your refunds within six, seven days. Oh, really? Yes, it, it works out uh, uh, very well. So uh, we have ways of uh, doing quality control review on these and therefore ensure the accuracy. Uh, IRS uh, is real, feels very comfortable with uh, the preparation of our returns. So it electronically helps out considerably. Now for those of us who are old fashioned <laughs> and uh, like a paper trail, um, if I was to come back next year and you have filed electronically, do you still have my information if I have questions? Yes, uh, that helps speed up the process. We're able to bring uh, the basic information we're able to bring forward, for example, your W-2s, we don't bring the exact uh, W-2 form uh, forward. We bring a W-2 form forward that is, that is a uh, copy. It does not have your specific information from last year. We are not allowed to keep that, okay? However, it does say that you had this, this many W-2s or you had uh, a uh, interest statement from this bank. Uh, and of course, uh, we have your uh, return and, and that's important. But we do encourage people to bring previous year's return in. So. Uh, okay. Well, we do want to cover a second topic. Have you said everything you need to say about um, our tax service, do you think? I think so. Uh, I would encourage people to uh, make appointments. Uh, we do have telephone numbers out at the Plymouth uh, Senior Center, uh, Sheboygan Falls Memorial Library, and of course the Senior Activity Center. And of it, course we'll, we'll uh, repeat the most important word and that is that it's free. <laughs> that always helps. Uh, well, Greg, um, thank you for that information and we'll bring Chuck into the conversation. Um, we first got involved with the walking bus project at the Senior Activity Center because a long time ago it was suggested that we have a bike rack. And one of the reasons that Chuck is here is because he's an avid cyclist, which in fact you are too. And we would like a bike rack at the Senior Center. We still don't have it, <laughs> but it's on our way. We dealt with Aaron Brout at the county and um, he developed a relationship with us, learned that we're very active seniors, and um, approached us about partnering with a project that involved children walking to school. Greg, can you explain how you first got involved in that? Very interesting. I'm on the uh, board of directors for the Friends of the Senior Activity Center, and uh, Kathy Manny from the ADR, and uh, which is the uh, Aging Disability Resource Center and uh, Aaron Brault came in they made a presentation and uh, it was really a no-brainer but we knew that uh, it wasn't within our purview so we suggested that they go to the Commission on Aging of which I'm also <laughs> a member of the Commission on Aging and uh, they made the presentation and uh, we got actively involved in it and we supported it uh, ever since. 
Right. Chuck, can you tell us how you got involved in it? Uh, I walk, I'm retired now, and I walk throughout Sheboygan and the area, and coming to the senior, I've been coming to the senior center about three years now, and we become friends, and you asked a favor of me if I would be, if I would participate, and I said yes. And you were an obvious candidate because you're in our Healthy Hikers group. Yes, sir. Um, which meets in the spring and fall and, of, and yes. hike about 2.4 miles every every week and because we do see you walking all over town um, and because I personally know that you bike and Greg bikes yes. um, so you you were obvious choices um, what did you have to do as a volunteer as a volunteer we just meet at well Greg and I are on the same route we meet it at the corner of 8th and Huron and Greg brings his grandson, Max, and then uh, two, bo two brothers, Ben and Gabe, run about half a block to meet us, and then we all take off together, and sometimes we pick up another or two of uh, children on the way, and it's fun. They become, all of them become my friends, and they even did some artwork for me, Gabe and Ben, which was very Awesome. And what was the time commitment, Greg? Oh, it was uh, really about 20 minutes is all yes. it was. Every uh, day or? No, it was just, just on one. Wednesdays. Right. Yes. Uh, we just, uh, we had the Senior Activity Center uh, sponsor Wednesdays, if you will. So we got people from the Senior Center, uh, got them together and said, okay, Wednesdays will be our day. And hopefully what we wanted to do was get the parents involved in this. And uh, we did get a few parents involved in it, uh, but we'd like to expand the program if we could. Right. Um, so the idea was that you picked up children uh, along the way. Yes. And then you walked them to school. What about after school, Chuck? I... I don't know if we're going to do that yet or not, and if we did that, I'd be willing to help out. It's my understanding that, um, as you know, we had to do background checks on all yes. our volunteers, um, obviously, and um, walking children to school, they meet you. So you are the bus, as it were, yes. and then they walk with you. The fear um, about taking children home is that if the parents aren't home, um, you, you know, there's, then you get seniors or uh, volunteers get to know where they live, which, which wasn't a factor the way we did it, right? It's a right. safety thing, you know, that, yes. that, you, that the children feel safe with you. So, uh, Greg, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how the non-motorized transportation project even thought about doing a walking bus. What's so important about that? Well, actually the concept uh, came up and uh, Aaron Brault uh, had written for a grant and uh, got the grant. And if you look around schools nowadays, you see all of these cars dropping all of these kids off and speeding away. Uh, you see all of the pollution. And then you look at the kids and you say, my, isn't he a little chunky? <laughs> And then you wonder why, you know, well, he's <clears throat> eating Twinkies or whatnot, you know, and uh, of course the parents are carting him around. And then you think back, uh, I go back 60, over 60 years and sit back and think, well, I walked to school. We didn't have our parents drive us to school. And uh, when they gave us the presentation, uh, they talked about these issues and we said, well, this is absolutely a no-brainer. This is a no-brainer. Even the seniors can benefit by walking and interacting with the kids, as Chuck demonstrated, you know, they became his friends, they became my friends. This is uh, good for both everybody, you know, I mean, uh, involved in it. And so I, we basically thought, yes, this, is, this needs to be pushed all the way around, and the advantages are that you're going to deal with pollution, you're going to deal with obesity. You also, uh, we had uh, Officer Preby at the time, 
uh, he uh, took us around and said that if you have any problems or you see uh, any type of safety issues, uh, take license plates, numbers, and, and just let us know right away so that we can take the necessary actions to make it safer for the whole community. Wow. This was, this was a no-brainer. We had to, you know, push this. So it was a good opportunity for us as seniors to be able to advocate for some of those young families if we felt like it, right? Yes. Um, Chuck, obviously you were a good choice because, because you lead a very active lifestyle. I think it was also great publicity for the Senior Center to prove that, you, you know, we don't all sit in, in big, big fancy chairs and knit and crochet. Um, that we are active, but what did you what did you get out of it that you were not expecting? It was just to me. It was just like another walk, so, walking with different people, and like I said, I made new friends, and I just the enjoyment of it. And we get to school, and they're all running around and having a good time, and. I enjoy that. And I know that our other volunteers uh, talked about the relationship. They were surprised at the relationships that they made with, with the children and yes. the families and, and that they think it will be quite lasting. So the big question, Chuck, is if we do this project again in the spring, which is what we're talking about doing, are you going to participate? Definitely. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and what do you think we need to do to get other people involved? What would you recommend about the, about the whole thing? I would just recommend to, there's a meeting or an auction on uh, March 4th. Just come there and meet all of us seniors that are gonna be there and so they can get comfortable and just go from there. Just, I enjoy it. I walk to school myself. Yeah, yeah. me too. And Greg, what, would, what advice would you have for anybody who's thinking that they might want to do this? Well, this was a pilot program at Grant, ESA. And uh, I think that uh, it was highly successful. However, a lot of people did not take advantage of it because they weren't well aware. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't well publicized. Mm -hmm. In addition, uh, we had the, uh, a, a change of principles. Mm -hmm. and, and, and something gets lost whenever you have somebody promoting it and then you have to replace them. So uh, I, I would honestly uh, like to see a more publication. I would like to see, uh, uh, like to see people, uh, parents, come to Grant School on March 4th. Uh, meet us. Uh, we're just uh, old grandmas and grandpas yeah. and <laughs> well, speak <laughs> <great>. for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that the time commitment didn't have to be every single Wednesday, correct? Uh, that's true. I, I uh, had to go to Branson, Missouri uh, and uh, one, one week. Uh, but I volunteered. I worked on three different routes. It was we had four. And it was a lot of fun meeting all of the different kids and everything. So. And Chuck, you did do every Wednesday, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. So out of your morning, how long do you think uh, you donated? You, get, you gave up? Well, I, would walk, I don't drive. I walk there, which it's not that far. And I would say no more than a couple hours, okay. if that. It was a great start to your morning, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, what we've read about, um, I did a little bit of research because the program started in Australia and, and is well known throughout Europe and, and in England. And um, what they found is that children who walk to school are better prepared for the day because they've exercised, they've got some fresh air, and they, um, you know, they're ready to learn kind of thing instead of just being dropped off. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, these children were able to trust another adult and feel that sense of um, a safe neighborhood by, by having the seniors. And for the seniors who didn't live close like you did, Greg, um, we did have transportation available from the senior center for anybody who required that. So we made it as easy as possible. And uh, sometimes we even had breakfast afterwards, which yes. is always fun. So if anybody's interested in 
becoming a participant like Greg and Chuck, uh, they can call the Senior Activity Center at 459-3290 and ask for more information about the Walking Bus Project and give us your name and we'll call you back and we'd be happy to have you as part of our program. So thank you, Greg, and for all that you do at the Senior <laughs> Center. And thank you, Chuck, for being part of yes. this great project, a pilot program that we will definitely be repeating. In fact, I think uh, we're, we've been out to Plymouth and they're going to do it there also. So uh, we're very proud of, of, our, um, of the fact that we were the first in Sheboygan County to do that. So thank you for being my guest today and uh, see you next time. has been on the run for 90 minutes. Average foot speed over uneven terrain, barring any injuries of four miles per hour. What I need from each and every one of you is a full target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, and dog house in that area. Your fugitive has just cashed in his 401k plan. And all he had to do was roll it over. Learn about rollovers and protecting your financial future and choose to save. You can't mess with a big dog. Thank you.